Hello, my name is Anubhav Swami and today for this presentation or demo I'll talk about Cisco Secure Firewall Cloud Native and give you a demonstration of this architecture. In this demo, what we are going to do is we are going to run an AWS Quick Start that will deploy your base infrastructure with multiple availability zones and multiple auto scaling group. So this quick start will deploy two auto scaling group, one for control plane and other one for enforcement point. And on the storage side, we will be using EFS and this complete architecture is being handled by Amazon EKS. And on the enforcement agent, there are four interfaces, inside, outside management, and other management is for, uh, for connection between control point and enforcement point. And we also use a redirector that redirects VPN traffic. So let's go ahead and quickly jump into AWS console and show you how exactly it is done. So when you go to Container Marketplace, you'll find Cisco Secure Firewall Cloud Native Offering and when you are on that page, you can read more about this offer. And if you scroll down, you'll find other multiple links as well, which will give you more information about the product. Um, but before I show you anything, uh, let's look at the additional resources. So there is a product page uh, that will help you get more information about the product and you can scroll down and if you want to read about uh, complete traffic flow use cases you can read my blog so this blog is available on cisco blog uh, you can read about uh, all the uh, use cases you can read about different instance types available scalable vpn architecture how you can enable dc backhaul multi-tenancy how you can use uh, these firewalls at the edge. The other important link that I want to highlight is a getting started guide. This is a quick um, uh, getting started guide that will give you information about on how to deploy it. What is the um, architecture in the backend that will run automatically when you deploy this cluster in the cloud. So in uh, uh, so in the in the uh, MVP one that we have recently added is is about AWS. The other important link I want to show you here is um, our uh, GitHub uh, repository. So now if you go to this link and you go to samples, we have YAML files as well. But you can read more about this product here as well. Uh, and if you go inside samples, you have basic samples and you have samples related to RAVPN as well. So I'll quickly show you this sample for uh, interfaces. So you can go back, you can look at sample for uh, adding access list and access group. Uh, you can have, you can look at sample for uh, adding uh, network objects, uh, sample for adding routes. You can play with these uh, YAML files and you can deploy your devices accordingly. But before we run this stack, I just want to highlight that there is a component that you are required to run before you run the actual quick start. So if you look at this one, so we'll run, we'll first run this prerequisite quick start and this prerequisite will take around three to 10 minutes to deploy depending upon the, uh, where you're deploying this. Uh, solution. So you go ahead and deploy it. It will create and enable your account in such a way that you can then deploy Cisco Secure Firewall Cloud Native. So you can you can see that once you clicked on that stack, that stack will enable all the policies required uh, required for deploying SFC and cluster. Now, um, in the meantime, while uh, we go there, so you 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 can see that we have. Uh, our, our list and uh, now if we want to deploy our stack we'll scroll up click on continue continue to configure and for deployment delivery we'll use quick start and there are three ways to deploy uh, this template new vpc existing vpc or you can create tenant to your existing vpc for this demo i'm going to be using new vpc so i'll give it a name um, my user id slash sfcn 
then I'll define my key and now this is really important part here you need to give your users ARN not your username so I'm going to copy my ARN and paste it here okay now on the storage type I'll use EFS and for my control plane or control point I will leave my desired and maximum uh, as default and for data plane or enforcement I'll leave it at default and I will assign public IP or elastic IP on both interfaces. So inside and outside both because I might require connection back to data center as well. For elastic cache, uh, for cache type, I'll choose elastic cache. Enforcement is enabled and I want to enable redirector concept as well. So I'll enable uh, auto scaling and redirector. Now I have pasted my smart uh, license token um, and then I am leaving everything else at default. Now remember, since I have enabled um, Redis database or Elastic Cache, I am required to add uh, keys or tokens. And remember, these tokens are hexadecimal numbers, so you can generate it using any online tool or uh, generate it manually and then paste it here. For my network information, I'm leaving everything at 10, 3700 slash 16 and I'm leaving all the options as default. Now in the end what I'll do is I'll check these two boxes and click on create stack. This process will take around 20 to 25 minutes depending upon options you have selected. I went ahead and selected everything so it will take around 25 minutes to deploy. Now you can see my stack is completely deployed. I'll show you my Elastic uh, Kubernetes Services cluster. I have a cluster ready. I have three nodes. First one is uh, control point, second one is uh, EP node, and then, then we have a, a redirector as well. And these are further workloads in my configuration. So now I can show you my network information as well. So it has created my uh, VPC and subnets as defined in the quick start. So now I'll go ahead and show you my EC2 instances as well. Really important to see what options are there. So we have two EP workers and one CP worker. So one is redirector, other one is enforcement point and other one is uh, control point. Now what I'll do is I will use my CLI. Uh, and I'll show you how quickly you can deploy configuration onto it. So I have defined uh, uh, my, uh, uh, my uh, namespace that I've used for my cluster, sfcn-system, and I'll define uh, my kubectl so that it will do the changes in that particular cluster. Now, uh, I'll go ahead and run a command that will show you uh, my parts that are there in, in, in this namespace. So I'm using kubectl get parts minus and then my namespace. So you can see that I have uh, all these um, parts running as part of my SFCN cluster. So now what I'll do is I will go ahead and uh, look at my uh, repo and from there I will copy this link and I will now do a git clone and I'll specify my uh, URL. So now I'm inside SFCN. Inside SFCN we have samples and under samples we have basics. So I'll, I'll go to basics as well. So now I'll do uh, LS to show you all the samples that we have. So now let me quickly show you uh, one of the samples that I have here. So it is a deployment uh, file and using this deployment file, I can configure my uh, SFCN interfaces. So now in order to deploy, uh, what I'll do is I'll just quickly run kubectl apply minus F and then I'll specify my YAML file name and then minus n and I'll give my uh, namespace as well. All 
Okay, so now you can see that my configuration is created. Uh, that means my, uh, my YAML file is applied. And now I can see IP addresses. You, you can see that uh, 10 gig, uh, gigabit interface 0 slash 0 and 0 slash 1. Uh, they now have IP addresses. I can now run another kubectl um, uh, command, kubectl um, apply minus F, uh, and then I will use access control policy or networks, whatever the case may be, and then I'll just def define my namespace as well. Okay, so we, are, we have created that as well. So I'm just showing you these as an example. You can modify and apply your uh, your YAML file. These are just small YAML files that I'm applying, but for a bigger configuration, you can just copy paste your config here, and then you modify config your configuration based on the formats uh, format given in the YAML file, and you can then uh, put that configuration. So now I have uh, applied all the YAML files that I had. And now I'm going to be showing you show output of show run. So when you run show run command, it will show you configuration of all the enforcement points. So uh, we are not interested in looking at a redirectors configuration. So that's why I'm scrolling up and I'll show you uh, configuration on my enforcement point. R pretty easy to deploy configuration and for big configuration files it's really really simple uh, imagine you have a code of uh, 1000 lines and you just want to copy paste it in, it in yaml and then put it into this particular cluster now i'm going to delete configuration because i, I i'll be using same cluster for other demos as well so I'll go ahead and delete all the configuration that I applied, uh, access list, interfaces, and networks. Next thing, important thing that I wanna show you is, is other options to manage this uh, complete cluster. And uh, one of the biggest ways to manage it is using uh, Cisco Defense Orchestrator or CDO. So I have my CDO open. And now in CDO, when I when I go to devices uh, and when I click on add a device, there is a new component known as SFCN. I go, I'll go ahead and um, give a, a name to my device group. I'll then, from the output of my cluster stack deployment, I have copied my token uh, as well and my cluster endpoint URL. So that is something which I copied from there. Uh, it is required so that I can point back to my cluster and this is a authentication mechanism to authenticate and onboard my uh, SFCN cluster into CDO. So now I'm in CDO and my cluster is successfully onboarded. But I want to show you since um, I don't have any configuration on my device, it will say uninitialized but cluster is online, ready to go. If you click on manage configuration, there is nothing. So you will see that unable to retrieve device configuration, please try again. Remember, before running this demo, I just deleted everything. So now you can manage devices using CDO. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.